Docker is garbage. Did the same shit that you did and got the gear. <laughs> I really fucking hate Docker. <laughs> So, as I can see from comments, uh, people are struggling with some unexpected errors that appeared in my previous videos. Um, sorry guys, I, I really tried all of my best to, uh, to show you everything clearly, but it seems that I missed some package or maybe some key points during the explanation that made you, uh, that made you to fail the project. Um, I'm sorry for late response uh, as you see from my voice my voice uh, is a bit weird because I got COVID it's about like a week that I can't smell anything um, but jokes aside really I will definitely try to review each comment after this video okay and I'm just changing the content a bit I will try to upload short videos each freaking video I'm trying to make it short but it takes at least 10 minutes okay so enough talk i will just focus on the project in this video i will show you how you can create um hundreds of objects at once so why it's important assume that you have to create for example 200 or 300 objects at once and if you try to create it separately i mean the SQL will fire separately for each object creation and it will make the server um, slow. It, may, it, it makes the server slow. Even it takes about like two seconds maybe or one second. But when we talk about a huge amount of traffic, it really matters. Even sometimes database can be locked for some reasons. Uh, I faced it a few times in my previous experience. So that's why I will today show you how you can create all these objects at once with atomic transaction, with transaction model. So let's open uh, the project. I already created uh, the, the app named posts, the project named blog, all this stuff, you know, like, really. I will not going to explain the Django from scratch. <laughs> this is the template I iterate, uh, I created for a loop to show the created posts. And here is the model, really simple, with title and created uh, date with date time field. And so here we don't need tests, we don't need URLs at this moment. Okay, let's jump to views. So in here you can see we have a blog view and that populates all the post objects and we are showing it in the template part. Okay, so I'm going to create a new view here. Let's say def generate uh, objects, for example. I will pass the request here. And um, let's say we want to create um, hundreds of post objects. So I will create a for loop here for e in range. Mm -hmm. And let's Let's give the title, for example, um, I will use formatted string here, post for name difference, the title, uh, to keep the title different. I will pass the i parameter here, and so that's it, I will make it like p equals post, I assign the, very, uh, the object to p variable and p dot save. That's it. The object will be saved in the database. And let's redirect. Redirect. After the creation. Redirect to what's the um, the name of URL block? Okay. Block. That's it. Save the views and. I will create a new path for that. Let's say generate. And let's import the view here. Mm, generate objects. Generate objects. And the name is going to be uh, generate. That's it. 
I will add the URL here. URL uh, <clears throat> generate. That's it. Okay, so let's see. We'll refresh the page. There is uh, no posts currently in this page. When I click bulk create, take a close look to the um, globe icon here. You will see that it takes about like one or one second maybe. Let's see. One, two, value error. Didn't return HTTP object, it returned none instead. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, actually, you can see the objects are created and we ended up with error. And this error is because of we didn't return the redirect. That's why. Let's create it again. Okay, you can see it takes uh, a bit long. That's not normal because it, it fires SQL queries each time when the new object is created. And that's absolutely bad approach. To fix that, we will use a transaction model. So let's start by importing it from the very top of this line from Django DB import transaction. That's it. And simply we will use it with transaction atomic. I will fix the indent here. And that's it. So what it does, it, it basically um, fires one SQL, um, one SQL query. God, I forgot the words. <laughs> the COVID made me crazy. It fires one SQL query and creates all objects at once. Okay. Let's now see the difference. The speed will be incredible right now. I will just flush the objects. Flush the database. It will clean all the objects. Run serve again. And let's refresh. Okay. One, two, three. Here you go. The speed is incredible. And this is the uh, better approach for such um, for such problems. <coughs> you will definitely need this. And sometimes even this, uh, the people are not the developers are not using this approach because there's a um, new function in Django which is bulk create bulk create Django. You can see this is the owner where is the documentation uh, this is the same logic you can create multiple objects at once it basically um, receives the list of objects where is it I can find it but create okay yeah you're just passing a list inside this function and it creates everything at once each object at once but uh, the reason why I showed you the transaction atomic because sometimes, uh, for example, if you have some uh, utils, the function, helper function, for example, uh, you just have to separate uh, or you just have to return a list from different function. And at this uh, point, you can't use um, the bulk create. That will be not, um, how to say, handy. Or let me not confuse your head too much. Uh, it depends on the situation, you know, it depends on the structure of the code. You can use both of them, but in this um, tutorial I just showed you transaction atomic because this one is really easy. You just have to path, uh, you just have to pass a uh, list of objects to this function and it will create everything at once. There are also, uh, for example, not bulk create, but bulk update. Let me see if it's here. Bulk update, yeah. It updates all objects at once. So try to optimize your SQL queries. Uh, it's really important to keep it uh, as small as possible, the amount of SQL queries. Avoid from server overload. This is really important in the production especially. So thank you for watching. As I said before, I will try to review all these comments. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so that's it. I will not I will not make this video long again. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy.